Hello and welcome to O-Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a turtle. These fascinating creatures are most often characterized by their distinctive bony shell, which serves as a protective armor. Turtles are reptiles, a group of animals that have roamed the earth for millions of years, adapting to various environments and surviving through different epochs. Turtles actually belong to one of the oldest reptile groups in the world, beating out alligators, snakes, and crocodiles. Turtles are over 200 million years old, which is even before the Jurassic era. These ancient creatures can be found in diverse habitats ranging from the oceans and rivers to forests and deserts. So let's learn more about some of the adaptations that have helped turtles thrive across the globe for so long. First, let's take a look at their external anatomy. The most recognizable feature of a turtle is its shell, which is composed of two main parts, the carapace and the plastron. The carapace is the upper portion of the shell that covers the turtle's back, while the plastron is the lower portion, right here, that protects the turtle's belly. These structures provide vital protection for the turtle's internal organs and serve as a distinctive characteristic of the species. The shell of a turtle is actually made out of bone. It's a very cool and unique adaptation consisting of the ribs and spine, flattening and fusing together to form a shell. You'll see this a bit better later, but this is the reason turtles cannot climb out of their shell. You can't climb out of your ribcage, can you? The carapace, here, formed out of flattened and fused ribs over thousands of iterations of evolution, and the plastron, here, likewise evolved from the sternum. If you don't know what your sternum is, that's the hard vertical bone that you can feel down the midline of your chest. It connects to most of your ribs to form the rib cage around your organs. Another interesting thing to note about the turtle is that their pectoral and pelvic girdles, what you and I might call our shoulder and hip joints, are within the ribcage rather than outside of it, as in most other animals. So you can see here's the elbow joint, and here's the knee joint, but the hip and the shoulder joints are inside the ribcage, inside the shell. So this is the fascinating thing about turtles. Imagine if you evolved to put most of your limbs inside your ribcage, then flattened and filled out your ribcage, to create a solid shell, and it helps you live one of the longest lifespans on the planet. Isn't evolution incredible? The shell is also one of the biggest reasons why turtles move so slowly. The extra weight of the heavy shell makes it hard and energy costly for turtles to move very fast. Also, because of the protection that the shell provides, turtles usually don't need to move very fast. There's no need to run from predators if you can simply hide inside your shell. Moving on, let's discuss what's actually covering the turtle's shell. While the majority of the shell is made out of bone, as I mentioned, it is covered by these scales called scutes. The scutes are made out of keratin, which is the same material that our hair and nails are made out of. We can try to pull out a little piece of a scoot here where there's a chip. Turtles can actually feel their shell because it does contain nerve endings. But 
They're not very sensitive nerves, so it's usually limited to touch or vibration. It's similar to the sense of feeling you would get if someone tapped on your fingernail. Another similarity to nails is that turtles continuously grow new scutes underneath their previous ones. Some scutes actually have growth rings, similar to those on a tree trunk, that can help estimate a turtle's age. I don't think we see them on this turtle though. Now let's move on from the shell and take a look at some features of the turtle's head. First off are the eyes. The turtle's eyes are positioned on either side of the head to allow them to detect movement and perceive their surroundings. In aquatic turtles, the eyes are well adapted for underwater vision, but terrestrial turtles like this one have eyes that are adapted for seeing through air. One thing to note is that turtles actually have a quote-unquote third eyelid. So here's the first eyelid, and here's the second eyelid. Zooming in, the membrane that we see halfway drawn across the eye is the half-closed third eyelid. This thin film is called the nictitating membrane, and it's a thin, transparent, quote-unquote eyelid that closes horizontally across the eye. The nictitating membrane helps protect the turtle's eye from dust or debris and keeps it moist. It's like having built-in goggles. Looking at the nostrils, these holes are called the external nares. Turtles are obligate nasal breathers, meaning that they always breathe with their nose and not their mouth. You'll see later how the external nares connect to the rest of the turtle's respiratory system. Turtles don't have ears like we do, Instead, they have this. The tympanic membrane is located on either side of the head and is covered by a thin layer of skin as you can see here. The tympanic membrane is a thin, circular or oval-shaped membrane that vibrates when sound waves reach it and it basically works like our eardrums. The vibrations move the tympanic membrane which transmits that information to the turtle's brain. The lack of external ears actually means that most turtles have pretty bad hearing. However, turtles compensate for this bad hearing by detecting sounds and vibrations through other parts of their bodies, like their bones and their shell. Moving on, here is the beak of the turtle. Turtles don't have teeth, so instead they use this sharp beak to break up their food. The beak is made of keratin, the same material that the scutes from before, as well as our fingernails, are made out of. And you can see that from the way the sound changes when I tap the neck of the turtle versus its beak. Herbivorous turtles, like this one, usually have flatter beaks for crushing and grinding plant fiber, while carnivorous turtles usually have sharper beaks for tearing apart meat. Now moving down onto the limbs. You can see that the limbs of the turtle that aren't inside the shell are covered by this dry, scaly skin that helps the turtle retain moisture. This is a common trait among reptiles. The turtle also has sharp claws at the end of its front and hind limbs.
almost all species of turtles can retract their heads and all of their limbs into the shell when they sense danger. One exception is the leatherback sea turtle. Lastly, at the very end of the turtle, near its tail, we can see the turtle's cloaca. The small opening we see right here, this is the cloaca, and it serves as an exit to the digestive, urinary, and reproductive tract. For more about the turtle's internal anatomy, check out parts 2 and 3 of our turtle dissection series.